Assalamualaikum everybody. Today we are going to talk about the agents which are which we are giving to treat MABSs. As you can see from the slide that we have antimaba histolica. Uh, it's uh, electron. Um, it's pictograph here. Let's talk about it. That how exactly it is uh, spread it out. Okay. All right. So this I've taken from Lippincott, right? So how exactly uh, Antamoeba historica, which is actually Amoeba, it uh, it uh, infects the human being, right? Okay. So uh, you see, it it has two mode of uh, disease, right? The first one is that how exactly it is uh, going to become invasive, right? And the other one is non-invasive. By invasive, I mean that it would go and attack other organi organs of the body. And uh, when I'm saying non-invasive, it means that it is only being limited within the human being, uh, within the GID tract, okay, and it's not affecting other organs of the body, right? Okay, so let's just say a person has consumed food or uh, water which was contaminated with fecal material, right? Once I, uh, I got it when I ate a chart from university, not our university, some other university so i developed this uh, uh dysentery so it was very it was not a good experience at all anyways so what happened a person ingests a cyst right okay so first of all we'll talk about the non-invasive type of the disease right of uh okay so the cyst is being inge ingested and then it goes to the stomach and surprisingly stomach's HCL does not affect the cyst at all, right? So it passes through the stomach without being affected. It enters into the ileum, all right? And that's a site, ileum is a site where it would start to produce trophozoids, right? So you see these blue color, these are the trophozoids, okay? Now, right now, since I said it before, that we will talk about the non-invasive part, right? So what it does is, the trophozoids, okay, they then develop the cyst around them, okay? And then, as a result, the cyst is being produced, and then through the uh, feces, cysts are uh, discarded, right? It means that the person who has MABS is that person's feces would have cyst in it, right? And then again, um, if, if, if it would contaminate water or food, so it will infect another person, right? So this is non-invasive. We are not going out of the GID at all. So right now, if I look into the medicines which are going to treat them, Right, if a person has has non-invasive type, right? So you see, the first step that is uh, that is uh, formation of trophozoids, right? This stage can be limited if if any person would take these medicines, which are uh, paromomycin and then idoquinone, right? So these are the two medicines. And uh, the second part is the cyst formation, okay? So you see, uh, this is a particular class of drug which actually would infect, uh, you know, it would inhibit uh, the cyst either when it's in the lumen or even if it is in the blood or it is invasive, right? It would treat that. So then we have a class of drug which will not have no effect on the lumen, right? So that class is mixed amoebicide, right? So it would affect any kind of uh, microorganism which is in the lumen or in the blood, 
right? So here the target medicines are metronidazole and tinidazole. Right, everybody? Okay. Now coming up back to this part. Let's just say trophozoid has penetrated through the wall of intestine. Right? Now what will happen? If the trophozoid would look, first of all, our body's immunity system would be triggered, right? So as a result, neutrophils would come up, okay? And they would start to do more damage, right? The damage to the cells of the GI tract. Along with it, let's just say, trophozoids manages to enter into the blood and through the blood, then it can infect other organs of the body such as brain, liver, and lungs, right? So, uh, and we don't want uh, the liver to have abscess. We don't want brain to have abscess, right? We don't want lungs to have abscess. So, that can happen in that category is invasive, right? As I talked. So, this would be systemic amylocyte which means that these are the medicines which would kill the trophozoids which are in the blood, right? So, the class includes chloroquine, dehydroemetin, emetin, right? Okay. Afterwards, like I've talked, that within the intestinal wall, okay, they would multiply and then they would uh, invade other organs, okay? So this is the entire cycle, how exactly histolytica amoeba is infecting a person. And these are the medicines which can be given in order to treat the people, right? So the forms of uh, amoeba histolytica that we have studied are cyst and trophozoid, right? The cyst, you consume it from outside the body, okay? And then the ingested phase, uh, the, the cyst gets into the lumen of the intestine and that's where trophozoids are released, right? Okay, so trophozoids would multiply and, you know, the entire thing would happen. One, one, uh, this is very important point here, that one way of treating luminal MBSs is to add antibiotics such as tetracycline to the treatment regimen. So, resulting in the reduction of intestinal flora, uh, amoeba's major food source, right? So, we are actually inhibiting its food source so that it would die, right? Okay. So, the major um, infecting organism is the antamoeba histolytica, which is ingested in cis form, divides in the colon, and can invade the intestinal wall and cause dysentery. Okay. Okay, maybe Bible. Okay. And then these are the medicines. So, you see, the first category is the drugs that will affect the lumen, right? Uh, the drugs that will affect the parasites that are within the lumen, right, of the intestine. Then we'll talk about uh, the systemic ones, right? The one that would infect, uh, these are the microorganisms which would infect, wait a minute, this is a class of drug which would uh, treat, oh my god, I'm getting so many messages from you people. Wait a minute, I'm reading those. Ek second. 